Hey everyone, I'm going to show how to download and install JEdit, and I'm also going to show how to set it up to easily use it for reading call manager traces. Up until now, I've been using Notepad++ for reading call manager traces. However, that doesn't really uh, help the people that use Mac as Notepad++ is a Windows application. So here I've pulled up JEdit in, you know, I did a, a search for JEdit download and um, you know, we'll jump right into downloading it, installing it and getting it all set up. I'm going to choose the first option here and let's see, it has download over here, but let's see if this page loads anymore. It doesn't look like it. I'm going to do the windows installer. And it looks like it takes us to SourceForge. And I just have to wait a little bit for this to actually download. There we have it. And the installer is up here. Yes. Okay. Next, next, next. I'm going to keep all of the defaults. I... Let's see, start J edit server automatically. No, thank you. Great quick option. I'll keep the desktop icon and we'll hit install. Okay. This application requires Java environment 1.8. Okay. So it looks like I'll have to install Java. We'll download that. Let's see, agree and start pre download. I'll run them both at the same time and hopefully I won't have any problems doing that. I don't care about the readme or the changes. I do want to, I'm, I'm gonna see what happens if I launch JEdit before Java is in, done installing. <clears throat> okay, yeah, so that won't work. I'll have to wait for the Java to finish installing and then um, I'll come back and launch the application and then we'll get into uh, customizing the setup. The Java installation is done. I was able to launch JEdit I don't want to see the tips when I launch JEdit. Um, other people might want that. I'm going to disable it. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to go to the plugin manager and I'm going to install um, two different plugins. I want to install Highlight and then the other one is Buffer Tab, I believe is what it's called. Mm-hmm, there we go. And then there's another one, I think it's called Editor Scheme. Yeah, this one here we want as well. And we'll install that, which also does common controls. So now I'll close this out and I'll go to plugins and then editor scheme, scheme selector. I want to do automatic apply and then I'm going to choose which one I want. I'll have to put some text on here so I know better. We'll close that. And we'll do plugin, editor scheme, scheme selector and automatic apply. Let's see, Dark Brian, I kind of like. I think I'm going to go with, with Neon. So it has automatic apply, I'll just close this. I don't like the line that's here. So I'll go to settings. And then for text area, I'll remove wrap guide. I'll hit apply, the line, goes away over there. Now I want to change the uh, text. I'll do 16 bold, let's see, 18 in bold looks good to me. 
Okay, apply. And for docking, there's a thing that when you search, you do what's called the, uh, I think it's called hyper searching. Um, the hyper search results come out as their own window. They're not docked. I want it to be docked and I want it to be docked at the bottom, just like it would be in Notepad++. Uh, for the gutter, which is this area over here that gives the, the line numbers, you can change the font here. I just want to get rid of the gutter because um, I don't really use that for reading trace. And uh, I don't know, I just kind of see it as an eyesore of sorts. And I also want to go to shortcuts. I want to have it be uh, for search in directory. Hyper search results, where are you? Search in directory right here. I'm going to change that to control shift F just like it would be in notepad plus plus. And let's go for context menu. I want to add in the option to highlight. So I'll do this drop down and do plug in highlight. I'm going to add highlight and I want this at the top of the list just for ease. And let's see what else I wanted to go to appearance. I want the text and everything up here to look different. So I'm going to set all of these to 16 and bold. All right, I like that better. Uh, I'll do, let's see, 14 and bold. Yeah, 14 is, is more in line with what I would like. All right, that looks better. And let me just do a control shift F real quick. That brings up my search in directory. What I need to do is select the option to search in subdirectories. For the filter, I'm going to do star.txt. This could be problematic if you are doing star, um, if you're searching in a file, in a directory that has files that end in .log. So you'll have to remember to modify this uh, particular filter to either be star.txt or star.log. I'll do it just like as if I were analyzing the call and we'll do DD equals and then a quote 2000 and I actually want to set this to ignore the case as well and then here for the directory I'll paste that and I'll hit find. So now I have my hyper search results down here at the bottom just like I wanted them. Um, let's go here. And what I want to do is check the highlight. It should increment on its own. Nope, I need to set that. In order to get the highlight plugin to select a different color each time I highlight a new string, I'll go into settings, plugin options, and then I'll go to highlight. And here I want to say, cycle the color when creating highlights. And then let's see if there's anything else that I want to do down here. I want to highlight the hyper search results. That way the stuff down here will highlight um, the same as what I highlighted up top. And let's see, I'll say ignore case, ignore case. And I'll leave that exactly like that. Okay. And now let's test it out. I'll select 2000 and I'll highlight that I'll select 1000 let's see so now it's actually doing what I wanted it to do and highlighting different colors and then it also is highlighting the same color down here um, in the search results now if I were to open up another file in here then um, it would allow me to have these same highlights in the other files, which is one of the big limitations of Notepad++, is that if you have highlights in file one, when you open file two, even if there's uh, the same string in file two, you're going to have to go in and apply your highlights. Um, if I 
close this entire application and reopen it, the highlights that I applied are going to remain. So that's one of the other things that I really like about this particular tool. And um, that buffer tab application or buffer tab plugin that I installed, it allows the files to open up here in a tabbed fashion. Uh, something I like about the file browser over here is that it actually shows me what file I'm in and I can see the files down here. If I go up to, you know, this particular folder, it'll change up here. I can make it all in one window. So um, you can also search for files in here. So if I did trace, then it would take me to it. If I did CCM, and if you typed in, um, let's say if I had two different things that started with C in them, if I had CUCM and uh, cookie, if I started typing in CUCM, it's going to select CUCM. Um, you can filter as well, looking for files up here. You can put a, uh, a directory, you can paste it up here. And that's just a number of things. I've only started using Notepad, or sorry, I've only started using JEdit uh, relatively recently, but so far I like it. And because somebody commented in a video a while back, they said, hey, doesn't it annoy you that you highlight in one file and then you open up a new file and it doesn't carry the highlight over? Um, I had mentioned JEdit, but I'm actually going to start using JEdit because of that comment and also because of the fact that um, JEdit is something that functions across both Windows and Mac OS. If you like this video, please go ahead and comment down below or hit the thumbs up. And uh, if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. And thank you for viewing.